Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to another Getting Started in Beekeeping. This is a series of videos designed for the absolute beginner or somebody who's just started in beekeeping or maybe someone who's considering beekeeping for the first time and wanted to know a little bit more about the hobby before they actually invested in some of the equipment. So if this is your first time with us, you're very welcome. Uh, please do consider subscribing. We've got a growing back catalogue of videos in the Getting Started series but also we've got the Beekeeping Basics videos that I release on a Sunday evening and also the Microscopy for Beekeepers videos that we have on a Friday. So there's plenty there for you to take a look at and get an idea as to what the beekeeping hobby is all about and whether it's something for you. So last week we looked at brood diseases and I mentioned that we were going to talk about integrated pest management and uh, barrier management plans. Uh, but what I really want to do is to um, take you out into an apiary to give you a demonstration of that and it's still a little bit cold for that. So I thought that what I'd do this week is take a look at some books for beginners and I'm delighted to say that Northern Bee Books, a specialist in beekeeping literature, have agreed to supply me with a range of beekeeping publications that I can show you and review for you and give you an idea of what's already available and what might suit you as a beginner beekeeper and then moving on we'll take a look at some of the more advanced beekeeping literature that's out there that you might also be interested in. Uh, I'm going to be able to supply these books via my website so I'll put links down below in the description if you're interested in any of the books and we'll go through each of the books and show you exactly what's in them and whether they might be suitable for you and I'll also give my thoughts on the books uh, be it good or bad and I hope that we can build up a library of books that will be of use to you and not books that will just sit on the shelf and have no relevance to the beekeeping that you're doing. So uh, without further ado let's take a look at the books that we're going to review today. So we've got three books that I've chosen and we're going to start with uh, a very basic beekeeping book. It's a really simple straightforward book. It's called Beekeeping for Beginners by Andrew Richards and it's been revised by a guy called John Phipps and that's got some uh, good basic information in it. The second one is a well-known book called Bees at the Bottom of the Garden and again that's a really good book for beginners. Uh, it's one that I've got and one that I think is quite useful to the absolute beginner. And finally we've got Guide to Bees and Honey by Ted Hooper MBE and this um, on the cover says the world's best selling guide to beekeeping and this one is the updated issue so this has um, a revision in it for uh, current beekeeping uh, particularly on pests and diseases and we'll take a look at that one as well. So I thought I'd start by just talking a little bit about the book in general. It costs £12.99 and it's available widely and as I mentioned earlier I'm now able to stock the book so uh, you can obtain it via my website or directly from Northern Bee Books. So what I plan to do is to just give a general overview of the books. I'm not going to go through them uh, chapter and verse but what I'd like to do is to just give you my views on why I think this might be a good book for the beginner and maybe some of the things that uh, are missing from the book if uh, in fact there are any things and really just give you uh, a general guide as to whether this is a book that might suit you. So the book costs £12.99. It's written by Andrew Richards and has been recently updated by John Phipps and in that John mentions that he's updated some of the texts at the back of the book and he talks about the use of top bar hives and, and such like. So generally speaking uh, it's a well written book, it's around 80 pages and one of the things I like about it is that the chapters are relatively short. Andrew starts by saying uh, in his first chapter which is titled how much, how much and how much, how much time is it going to take, uh, how much is it going to cost and how much of a return will there be and it's quite an interesting concept to start the book with that in that by putting prices down for the equipment that you're going to need it gives you an idea exactly how much it's likely to cost. Uh, however the downside to that is it's in pounds so it's designed specifically for the UK market and also uh, prices fluctuate quite a lot so it is possible that the prices could go down as well as up and 
uh, I've taken a look at some of the prices online and the pricing in the book uh, reflects quite accurately some of the prices that you can get for some of the equipment these days uh, but in it he suggests that you would pay £75 for a nucleus colony from a local beekeeper and uh, that might well be the case but generally nucleus colonies are costing well in excess of £100 at the moment um, however to balance that you could also find a friendly local beekeeper who's willing to give you some bees so at £75 I guess that works out at about an average. The thing I do like about the book is that there's lots of colour photographs and the photographs show a wide range of the different aspects of beekeeping that the beginner beekeeper uh, would be interested in. I flicked through the book and read it quite quickly in about 30 to 40 minutes um, but it's not a book that is designed for someone like myself with a lot of experience in beekeeping. It is, as it says, a beekeeping for beginners book. Having said that, some of the photographs can be quite misleading. There's a photograph of a gent inspecting a beehive without any protective clothing on and that might lead some beekeepers to think that you don't need any protective equipment and I would say if you were to inspect one or two of my colonies you would definitely need some protective equipment. I would say to the beginner don't be fooled into thinking that you don't need the protective equipment on the basis of that photograph. There's also a photograph of a smoker uh, on the side of a, a hive and I think this is again uh, it's an old galvanised smoker by the looks of things but it doesn't have a cage around the actual smoker box itself and the smoker box gets really hot so you might be tempted to buy a cheap smoker without a cage around it for protection and it will only take one time for you to touch the side of that smoker box and find out exactly how hot it is and, and burn yourself before you throw that one away and get yourself one with a cage. That said there's a lot of really excellent photographs in the book and the diagrams particularly the ones that show how the larvae pupate and turn into uh, emerging adult workers is excellent and the line drawings really do make it quite simple uh, to see how to perform various tasks such as trying to find the queen or doing a uh, swarm management technique such as artificial swarming. The book goes on to describe getting started in chapter 4 and the type of protective clothing that you do need and it talks about hive tools and getting stock, choosing the right type of hive as well and again although it is very basic I have to keep reminding myself that this is a book designed for the beginner beekeeper so it gives a really good overview of the hobby uh, but what I would say is that generally speaking it just fleshes out some of the bones of beekeeping and but will give you a good taster of what the hobby entails and whether it's something that perhaps you would want to continue to pursue also I think if you had committed to start beekeeping then this book would give you a very good general overview of the hobby. Um, but it does lack in terms of pests and diseases. If you were to buy this book, you would then need additional books to supplement it and to move on from the information that is contained within it. But generally, I would say it's a worthwhile book getting. If you're an absolute beginner or thinking of starting beekeeping, then getting this book Beekeeping for Beginners by Andrew Richards and revised by John Phipps is a good starting point and uh, a good book to start your library with. So moving on, we have Bees at the Bottom of the Garden, which is by Alan Campion and illustrated by Gay Hodgson. And this uh, was one of the first books that I purchased uh, way back in the late 1980s and is a real step up from the Beekeeping for Beginners book that we just looked at. Uh, the illustrations in this book are fantastic. They really bring home some of the aspects of beekeeping that uh, you really need to get to grips with. But more than that, the information is more in depth and possibly more relevant to uh, beekeeping at uh, the bottom of the garden. What I particularly like about this book is the way that it steps up from the previous book and gives more information about all aspects of beekeeping but doesn't flood you with so much information that it becomes confusing. It's really interesting to see the style in which it's written 
uh, from the perspective of somebody who initially didn't have a great deal of experience with beekeeping but has learnt for instance that protective equipment is really important and that you should wear protective equipment to start with and then make a decision as to whether you need quite so much. I think the way the information is presented in uh, Alan's book Bees at the Bottom of the Garden is very thoughtful in the way that it explains the basics to you without overcomplicating things and takes you through the beekeeping year. There's a section on autumn feeding, there's a section on the winter period. There's also information about pests and diseases which were omitted from the first book that we looked at. So in terms of another book that would help you get started in beekeeping, I think this one in particular is a, a very good buy. It costs £10.45 and again I'll put links down in the description to take you through to the book and I think this is probably uh, one of those books that you would like to have on the shelf as a beginner as not only a, an enjoyable read but also as a book that you can turn to as a reference point something that maybe as you're beekeeping and you're looking through your beehive you find something that you're not sure about then you can go to this book and there may well be a section in here that you can relate to. Having said that uh, there are sections that could do with uh, more information um, but because of the type and style of the book uh, it's uh, limited in that in-depth analysis and so you would probably want to move on to our next book which is the Guide to Bees and Honey. But before we do I would say that Bees at the Bottom of the Garden from my perspective is a highly recommended book uh, for you as a beginner beekeeper to read because it will really give you a feel for the hobby and hopefully give you all of the necessary information that you need to get started in beekeeping. And finally today on to the third in the books that we're reviewing and that's Ted Hooper's Guide to Bees and Honey and this without doubt is the book that uh, I would turn to as I was learning my trade in beekeeping for information on how to deal with any aspect of beekeeping and this particular volume has been updated by Margaret Thomas and has a new section on pests and diseases and this is a book that uh, I continue to use and to refer to occasionally when I need to check some information or just remind myself of a particular skill within beekeeping that uh, I might need to just refresh myself with. If you're on a desert island and had to take one book with you for your beekeeping then this would be the volume to take. Uh, I thoroughly recommend it. It's uh, an in-depth guide to honeybees and beekeeping and covers off pretty much all aspects of beekeeping that you could possibly need as a hobbyist beekeeper. It's priced currently at £12.99 and again I'll put a link down in the description below. If you were to visit a bookshop and picked up this book and just quickly flip through it you would see that it's filled with black and white photographs mostly and some line drawings. There's one or two colour photographs in the updated version uh, but generally speaking um, a lot of photographs look uh, quite dated and you might be tempted to just put the book down because you thought that it was an old book but the information contained in the text in this book far outweighs the negative impact of any of those photographs and if you look past the photographs then the information stored in this volume is easily worth the purchase price. I think for me one of the best sections in the book is handling bees and controlling swarms. When I first started beekeeping that section taught me basically how I should handle my bees and how to keep them quiet and how to manage any swarming impulse. It didn't always work but the information in the book really does help uh, explain the whole process quite easily and thoroughly and will give you the knowledge that you need in order to help you control your bees and to prevent the swarming impulse and that was one of the major factors for me because I was keeping bees literally at the bottom of my terraced house garden and swarming was a bit of an issue uh, but this book really helped me with that and it stayed with me throughout my beekeeping career. Although it's a book that you can sit down and read from cover to cover once you've done that it's a book really that you can go to on a weekly basis for advice and help and 
use it as a reference point for any of the beekeeping that you're going to do and if you only had the one book as I say this would be the book to go for because it has pretty much everything in a book for beekeeping that you could possibly want. I guess for those of you that are top bar beekeepers there's no section designed specifically for um, natural beekeeping or for using top bar hives specifically or worry hives that style of, of beehive but the basics for beekeeping are contained within this volume and if you are a top bar beekeeper and the principles within this book can be used as much for somebody using a Langstroth beehive or a national beehive as much as a top bar beekeeper who's not using perhaps a more standard method of keeping the bees. So the current edition of A Guide to Bees and Honey by Ted Hooper is in its fifth edition and it was updated in 2010 and could really do with an additional update uh, as of now really. The section on pests and diseases whilst having been updated uh, previously could do with an additional update in order to show the current authorised treatments for Varroa. In the book it really only talks about the pyrethroid treatments and also Apigard but we now have a range of other treatments that are available and currently here in the UK we also have the uh, looming threat of the Asian Hornet which has been found late last year in 2016 and there's no mention of the Asian Hornet in the book so really it would be great if we could find somebody that would produce another update for the book but as it stands uh, the book has as much information as the beginner beekeeper could possibly need in order to help them get started in beekeeping and have an in-depth reference guide that they can turn to should they not have a local mentor. So at £12.99 this is a book that I would thoroughly recommend to you. It's one that I used on a regular basis as I was developing my beekeeping skills and I think for any uh, novice beekeeper or beginner beekeeper this is a book that will have lots of information that you can turn to and help with your beekeeping skills. So that's the first time I've done a book review. Whilst I haven't gone through them chapter and verse, I think just giving you an overview and, and my thoughts on what's contained within each book and the books that I would suggest you purchase, I hope that that was of some use to you. So in terms of the books that I would uh, recommend for you to buy, I definitely think that if you haven't started beekeeping, but you're thinking of dipping your toe into the water, then the Beekeeping for Beginners book will give you a general overview of what's required of a beekeeper and the type of equipment that you're going to need and tells you a little bit about the honeybee and the beekeeping hobby. Alan Campion's book Bees at the Bottom of the Garden is a much more thorough book and gives you a lot more information so if you've committed to becoming a beekeeper then that book as a first beekeeping book would be ideal for you. It gives you uh, a year-long look at what's required in beekeeping and also the, the drawings in it by Gay Hodgson uh, are really good. Uh, look out for the photograph of the person that's been stung on the face um, with the puffy eye. That's quite an interesting drawing. And generally, I think the book uh, is well worth uh, the purchase price and one that I would recommend. And finally, Ted Hooper's Guide to Bees and Honey. Whilst it is somewhat dated in terms of the photographic content, and the pests and diseases section which has been updated uh, it could do with another revision uh, but as a reference guide for somebody who's beekeeping and wants to have a book that they can turn to as a beginner beekeeper I think it's an excellent book and one that's well worth purchasing. I hope you found that interesting I will leave uh, links in the description below Again, my thanks to Northern Bee Books for supplying those books for review. Uh, I hope to have some more books for you in the coming months that I can share with you. And we'll look at books that cover areas of specific interest, such as queen rearing and maybe honey production, that kind of thing. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. It would be great to have you along for the coming season. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and uh, share the videos in any of the social media networks that you're involved with. For those of you that are on Facebook, I've recently joined a couple of beekeeping groups 
I'm brand new to Facebook so just finding my feet with it but there's a couple of great groups that I can recommend. One's called Beekeeping Basics and uh, I've just joined that group so if you're a beginner beekeeper that's a really good one to look out for and another one which is perhaps a little bit more in depth which is called Beekeeping Techniques. Uh, it's a closed group so you have to ask to join but it's a fantastic group and there seems to be a lot of really friendly people in there willing to offer up advice so check those out and we'll catch up next week thanks for watching